I'm Dr. Sheldon L. Akins from the Leading Equity Podcast and a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Hello, Edu Magicians. Welcome to the Edu Magic Podcast with your host, Dr. Sam Fesich. Dr. Sam is a professor of education, author of Edu Magic, and a pumpkin spice latte fan. This podcast is designed for pre service teachers. Remember, friends, teaching doesn't begin at graduation, but during that first class at 8 a.m. Let's get this party started. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Edgy Magic Podcast. I'm Dr. Sam Fessich, and I'm joined by Dr. Jessica Redkay today. Jess is an amazing educator. She, uh, uh, we, we met at KTI, no, we didn't meet at KTI. We met around KTI, like on Twitter, and we also um, connected through our love for um, impacting that next generation of teachers. And Jess does it all. She does STEM. She teaches future teachers. She teaches students in the classroom. She is a true inspiration, and I'm so glad to have you on the show today. Thank you so much, Jess, for coming on. Yeah, thank you. I think you do so much um, to inspire, you know, teachers and everything. It's so great to, you know, connect with you because we just want to make that positive impact for our students. Yeah, we do. And I think a great way to do that is through modeling how we impact the world through our practice. And you are um, a current educator. You are an adjunct professor. You work with um, RoboKind. You have so much going on, Jess. Can you just give us a brief overview about yourself and what got you into this field of education before we start drilling down into your current role? So what got you inspired to be an educator? So when I was younger, I just always knew that I wanted to become a teacher because I always admired, you know, the teachers that I had. But I was really interested in how I noticed that there were some teachers who were able to inspire the students, even if they weren't really interested in learning. And there were some teachers that could just they would teach, but it what they weren't always able to make a connection with every student in their classroom. And I wanted to be a teacher that could reach every student who I was lucky enough to work with in the future. I wish you could see me. I'm nodding my head. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I think a lot of us have have that that drive as a young age to always want to be a teacher, to just have that. I don't it's just this feeling, this calling that, that you want to be there and you want to impact all this, all students in your classroom. And I think as, as you go throughout your K-12 career, your college career, you notice that there are some teachers there that are in it to win it. They want to really just pour into their students. And there are other ones there that mm, maybe not so great. We're going to be the great teachers. We're going to be there pouring into our, our students. And one way I feel that you do that, Jess, is by being a lead learner and always continuing to learn more and bringing more into your classroom uh, best practices, ed tech, some strategies, team and STEM, all the things. Can you share a little bit about your journey as a professional educator, that journey of, of never stop learning? I think that every opportunity that I have, I just try to figure out like, well, how would that work in my classroom? And will that help the students learn and will help the students enjoy learning? And I've had the opportunity to travel to some different places like in Canada or different schools and to see what different people are doing. And I always get inspired and think like, well, can I go back and do that? And then I like to share that with others because I'm not going to always have all of the answers in um, trying out all of these different things that are new to me, but I can connect with other people who have answers or who can support me and work together through um, the different processes that I'm trying out along the way. And I think one way that you're able to connect with other educators is through KTI, the Keystone Tech technology innovator. Um, could you share a little bit about that experience? I know you get so on fire for KTI at any time, any KTI people come together, we just get so excited. But can you share a little bit about that learning experience and how that helped transform you into the educator you are today? Yeah, well, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to take part in the KTI Summit in 2018. And when I attended the conference, I was just blown away because I was surrounded by people who are so passionate 
and on fire for um, teaching and learning. And they wanted to inspire us to innovate and connect and lead and advocate and just um, like develop in so many new ways. And I just absorbed everything and took in every moment and learning opportunity that I had there. And I felt so invested in that after the conference was over, I felt like I had to give back to others because if I could make other people feel the way that I felt at the summit, it, like even just a little bit of the way I felt at the summit, then I could make a meaningful impact because like that's what our purpose is and they helped us remember our why like why are we teaching in the first place and remembering your why and just giving back to the teaching community and you do that in so many ways can you share about the current role that you have now in education or should i say roles in education that you have jess yeah, well, um, I'm a second grade teacher, and I also have the opportunity to teach, um, you know, pre-service uh, college students as well. And then I have a, a humanoid robot, the first female humanoid robot um, from Robokind, who I code to act as a teaching assistant in my classroom. And then I also have a girls who code club where I have um, girls who learn to code using Robin and then they used Robin um, to create their own lessons and they applied what they learned with coding to teach younger students. And Robin is the humanoid robot that you're using through Robokind. How did you get into STEAM and STEM learning and why is that important for us to, to show that to future teachers, to show the importance of the hour of code or STREAM or STEAM and, or all the STEAM, all the STEM um, acronyms? Why is that important for us to be able to let our, our future teachers know that, you know, this is here, this is here to stay? What do they need to know about that type of, um, con I don't know if content area is the right word, that type of uh, strategy, teaching teaching strategies and, and ways that you can incorporate that into your classroom? I feel like coding is a new form of literacy and we need to help create um, you know, content for our students to help them be able to not only consume and like learn, but they also need to be able to produce and create things. And they need to be able to see how you work through a design process and how you should ask questions and you should plan and think and work throughout this process to um, redesign things and keep failing forward and realizing that you can create something that you first developed in your mind and that you are able to do this. And so if we want to have students who are able to like create their own platform for communicating in, you know, in today's society or even in the future, because there are so many jobs um, where you need to be able to code, then um, we need to start increasing this. And we, other countries are doing this and we need to make sure that we're not just teaching it, but we're like integrating it across the content areas for our students. So they see um, it as a skill and it's meaningful for them to learn. I like how you called coding the new form of literacy. I think that's so important for our future teachers to know. For our future teachers who are listening, what are some resources so they can get started and hit the ground running either in field placement or student teaching when it comes to STEAM and STEM in, in the classroom? I think one of the things that you can do if you're looking into coding uh, would be starting with code.org and you can go on and you can learn about like the basics of coding and understanding all of that. There are so many great forms out there. Like if you look into like Scratch, Scratch Junior, and if you're able to use Scratch, then you're able to use that with a lot of different robots and a lot of different um, platforms along the way. Another resource, if you're looking at um, STEM education, would be on the Pennsylvania Department of Ed's uh, their STEM toolkit. And so when you go on there, you can search by grade band, and then you can look for different tools on there or lessons that you can start to explore and integrate into your classroom. So when I worked on that committee, um, one of the things I think 
that, you know, for early childhood educators or teachers would be to see the literacy-based STEM challenges. So if you just have like a children's book that you could read in your classroom, and then you could use that as a springboard into um, a design challenge in your classroom for students to be engineering and like working through the design process along the way. I like that. And I'll post all those links to um to, to the resources on the show notes. Thank you so much. So this so this is a podcast just for future teachers. And let's start with those who are just beginning their college career, maybe those freshmen and sophomore students, maybe they have a couple of observations and field experiences under their belt. What kind of advice do you have for them, either when it comes to STEM or STEAM or in general to um, approach their college career with success? Well, the one thing that I think is like the most important is just to make the most of every opportunity that you have along the way and learn as much as you can and connect with as many people as you can. And then I think that you should start to develop your own um, professional uh, framework for what your pedagogy will be as you become a teacher. Like what are, what's your philosophy for teaching? And you want to start to apply the things that you're learning in class and how they're going to impact you in the future as a teacher. And then just documenting everything along the way so you can make yourself stand out and you can also like explain how this theory is going to relate to what you're going to do in the future in your classroom. The application piece, I think, is so important. So you are understanding maybe the theory behind a certain pedagogy, but actually going out and seeing it done in a classroom, actually doing it yourself in a classroom, I think that's where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, to just see it implemented and see the impact that it has. Like these STEM and STEAM challenges, trying them out and seeing how students respond to it. I think it's so important for them to to try to get different observations and field work in different types of schools and different types of classrooms and not just going back to like their home school or their home district because they're comfortable, but really like getting outside the box or thinking outside the bun, so to speak, and try to really engage in, in, in things that are going to make them think and make them stretch a little bit. Mm, it's always important because you want to always step out of that comfort zone and you want to be able to um, push yourself because what if those things that you're thinking could be a possibility for you end up being a possibility? Like for me, I never imagined that I would have a humanoid robot that I code to help me in my classroom as a teaching assistant, but that happened and it all started with a what if question. And so if you're developing your ideas you know, don't be afraid to write down things that would be like, well, what if, because if you can dream it and then you can look at it and then work through it and see if it's a possibility. Um, but then understanding that the, the hard work that goes into it to making those dreams become a reality. Too. Mm hmm. Yeah. Th thank you. Thank you so much. I think that's, that's an incredible advice. If you can dream it, try it out and see, and see what can be done with it. You never know what, what could happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Because like if all of the teachers, you know, pre-service teachers who listen to this would start to say to themselves, like, well, I learned about this or I heard about this and start exploring things. And like they start to get excited about different things and they can bring that excitement to their future students. Like we could just ignite such a spark of curiosity and love of learning in our students and in our future teachers. Absolutely. I love that. Igniting a spark in the love of learning for, for their students, for the teachers that they'll work with. I think that's incredible because they can really bring lots of experience and ideas and techniques and strategies that they're learning about right into that classroom and just try something new. And I think it's so important to maybe try something new while you're with a cooperating teacher. So they have your back and you can try something, see if it works, see what tweaks need to be made and and just see what happens. I think that's an incredible mindset to have when it comes to doing field work or student teaching is that mindset of what if I try this and what what would happen if I did if I if I did something new. That's right because sometimes when you're just starting out something for the first time you start to pull back a little bit because you're wondering like am I capable of doing this? And the answer to that is yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you should just go for it because incredible things happen when you step out of that comfort zone. Direct our conversation a little bit to those who are student teaching. Maybe um, they're student teaching in the spring or, they're, or they just finished up student teaching. What advice do you have for that group of listeners? 
I think if you're at the point where you're getting ready to work with your own class of students, then what you really need to do is like synthesize and look back at all of your experiences and start to make a strategic plan for what you're going to have like happen in your classroom in the future. And then start to connect with some other teachers that maybe you didn't have an opportunity to observe when you were in the field. Like I was so impressed recently, um, another student who's finishing up student teaching um, asked if they could come to my classroom just to observe because they were interested in some of the different things that I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a great strategy because they're willing to connect and uh, start to come up with additional ideas that can be used in their classroom. That That's great. That's really commendable for that student teacher who finished up and wants to come back and observe or um, for the student teacher who maybe student taught in the fall, going back and volunteering at a school, keeping your foot in the door, I think it's really important. Yeah, and getting connected to with um, helping out with different, you know, clubs that are going on in your area mm, yes. um, and supporting um, other students. Like one thing I'm really excited about is I have uh, pre-service teachers who are acting as mentors for my Girl to Code Club. And so they're taking a personal interest in each um, girl's individual project that they're working on. And I really think that, you know, as you're starting to, you know, develop and get ready to teach, you might start to feel like you're in this, like, waiting period, waiting to find out if you're going to be in, like, which grade or how the interviews are going to go. But don't waste that waiting period. Use that time to really develop your own practices, observe other teachers, work um, with clubs and read professional development books and just start to really develop yourself. Because once you start actually working as a practicing teacher every day, you start to lose more time to do those kind of things. So Mm -hmm. make the most of those opportunities now. I like that. Thank you so much, Jess. And if my listeners, I know they're going to want to contact you and ask you all the questions. How can they contact you best on social media? On Twitter, um, my handle is at Red K Resources. So if you go into Twitter, that would be the best way to um, connect with me. Thank you so much for your time today, Jess. And I can't wait for my listeners to hear all the great advice that you have for student teachers, students who are just starting their college career, and those awesome STEM resources. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for having me. And there you have it, Edu Magicians. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with your friends. For more edu magic, check out sfesich.com and follow Dr. Sam on Twitter and Instagram at sfesich. Until next time, you have the edu magic within you.